26th of January 2001 with a magnitude of 7.6 on the Richter scale. The world witnessed a colossal catastrophe in the form of the Gujarat earthquake. Within minutes of the disaster, 20,000 people were killed. 167,000 people were left injured and a staggering 400,000 homes are destroyed. 26th of December 2004, the world is once again left traumatized by an earthquake. This time, the magnitude is 9.1. This time, the earthquake is so severe that it shook the entire planet one centimeter from its axis. This time, it's the Indonesian earthquake or the tsunami. This time, 230,000 people are killed instantaneously across 40 different countries. 8th of October 2005, the world is once again left shocked by an earthquake. Kashmir, it's a Saturday. Students are in school just like every other Saturday. A disaster strikes in the form of a 7.6 earthquake within minutes. The area is transformed from a peaceful region to a pool of dead bodies, totaling in excess of 75,000 individuals. Entire towns and villages are wiped out at once by this disastrous devastation. 11th of March 2011, and I'm talking just a few months back, the Japan earthquake. The world is once again shocked as the disturbance sends waves of up to 38.9 meters high sweeping through Japan, destroying 125,000 buildings in the process. The earthquake rates 9.1 on the Richter scale. The death toll is 15,093. But do not get me wrong, my brothers. My intention, my purpose, my objective of standing before you today is not to inform you of some figures and some facts. It's not to portray some numbers or some stats. Rather, is to make each and every one of us understand, is to make each and every one of us comprehend, is to make each and every one of us realize the similarities between these incidents, the similarities between these disasters, the similarities between these catastrophes. What's the common factor? What's the common feature? What can we deduce from these heart-rending, tear-jerking, agonizing events? Let's answer this question with another question. Did the 630,000 individuals killed by these chaotic catastrophes have any idea that their time is up? Did they wake up in the morning knowing it's the last day of their lives? Did they go to school or work aware of what their day would bring to them? The simple answer is no, because death is a phenomenon that is unexpected and unpredictable. Every next moment could be our last. One can be sleeping, eating, walking, talking, studying, exercising, dressing, shopping, popping, playing, relaxing, chillaxing, working or enjoying his life and before he knows it his time is up. Take the example of Nicholas Fur, the footballer. He comes on as a sub for Benfica. He makes the assist for the only goal of the game. The world is watching. It's a football match being broadcast on live television. He's only 24 years of age. The match is near its finish. He makes a tackle and receives a booking. As the yellow card is shown to him, he ruefully smiles at the ref and then turns around to get back to the action. All of a sudden, he bends forward and then falls flat on his back. He dies on the football pitch. The other players look at him in visible distress. They begin to cry, but the crying doesn't help because death is unexpected. And when it comes to death, nothing can prevent it. No force or power of any type can delay death, let alone prevent death. No physical, medical, chemical, financial, technological or biological force can delay death for as little as a second. Why? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself says in the Quran and Kareem وَلَنْ يُؤَخِّرَ اللَّهُ نَفْسًا إِذَا جَاءَ جَلُهَا That when it comes to death, when it comes to taking lives, when it comes to taking souls, then Allah ta'ala does not delay. Now that we have established the fact that death can come to us at any time and any place, anywhere and anyhow, through any form and any means, the next question is, the next question is, my brothers, is are we ready to die? Are we living a life in which we are investing for our hereafter? Or are we living every moment in hope of increasing our stake in this deceitful world? In essence, 
Are we living for this world or are we living for the hereafter? Let's take an example of you living for this world. And for those of you who don't know, I'm talking about Sikandari Akbar Alexander the Great. A man considered to be one of the most successful commanders of all time. At the age of 30, he had one of the largest empires in human history. He had it all at the age of 25. He had conquered 90% of the known world. Yet this same man, this same Alexander, this same Sikandar, when he's on his deathbed and surrounded by his men, he makes a bizarre wish. He says, oh men, oh men, after my death, when you put my body in the casket, they let my arms hang over the edges with my palms wide open. The people around him ask the reason to this bizarre request. He replies, so that people can see, so that the world can see that I am that very man who conquered the entire world. Yet today, I am leaving the world empty handed. This was the end of you and it all. We must realize, my brothers, we can possess the most luxurious of houses, the most expensive of clothes, the most profitable of businesses, the most classy of cars, the most respected of positions in society, the most well paid of jobs, the most prestigious of degrees, the most envied of grades, the most impressive of CVs, the most affable of associates, the most affable of associates, the most ecstatic of happiness, the most safe of security, and the most stunning of wives. But when the time of death comes, then all of these things will remain behind, and only our good deeds will remain with us. Why? Because the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is reported to have said in Bukhari by Hazrat Anas radiallahu ta'ala an ki yatba'u al-mayyita thalatha ahluhu wa maluhu wa amaluhu fa yarji'u thnan wa yabqa wahid yarji'u ahluhu wa maluhu wa yabqa amaluhu that when a person leaves this world then only his good deeds will remain with him and the sahaba radiallahu ta'ala anhum ajma'een they properly understood this they properly understood this message that's why they didn't live for this world.